I mean, if, if he joins a room, any room or the dressing room or a camera, you know what I mean. Uh, he was so confident about himself, of course, but in a good way. He has his own view on things and when things are not working well in his way, I think he was not was not easy to handle and that's what happened in the last years. In a normal career, or yeah, he would one day he will become manager of the German national team. Everyone uh, is looking for that. Hi, I'm Jeff Stelling and this is Football's Greatest. Each week I'll be sitting down with a legend to discuss and debate some of the best exponents of the beautiful game. The players that got you off your seat, the hard men that made you wince, and the moments that will stay with you for life. Today, we are talking about the greatest German players to grace the Premier League. And with us is someone who certainly could be considered to be among them. He won four Bundesliga titles, one Premier League, three FA Cups, one League Cup. He was also twice a Champions League runner-up and a World Cup runner-up and was German Footballer of the Year on three occasions. Joining us from Munich, it's a hello to Michael Ballack. Hello. Look, I was thinking back to your playing days, Michael, you know, and my memories are that you were physical, technical, you had a great passing range, you could tackle, you were a goal scorer, you were great in the air, you were a leader. Keep going. Did, did you have any weaknesses <laughs> at all, Michael? <laughs> There's no weakness. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking. No, I, I, I think as a midfield player, as you described, um, I was quite complete in a way that I could defend and also also attack and especially scoring goals was one of my 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 biggest strength uh, which I developed over the years I didn't have it from the beginning but in the youth I played and it helped me I played um, not for inside when we played inside I played forward and outside I was I was a sweeper how you say in English right yeah uh, when with the age of, of 17 and then I moved with 18 uh, to the offensive midfield so the the coaches actually wanted me very at a very young age in in quite a lot of different positions on on the field because yeah i i could play it with as you described um with the left and with the right so in different situation uh, i had different solutions so that helped me of course a lot when when i became um, a professional footballer to actually adapt in in different situations and develop my my strength on the field yeah, I, mean, I, I, I saw you described many times as the complete midfielder and it, it's hard to disagree with that. I mean, your record at Chelsea in the Premier League was amazing. I looked at and saw uh, 105 Premier League games, you lost, you were on the losing side 10 times. And, and when I looked at that squad, you know, Michael, as, as well as yourself, you've got Peter Cech and John Terry, Frank Lampard. Didier Drogba, Branislav Ivanovic, big, big, big characters. So what, what was the dressing room like there? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned a few. And uh, if I look back, this is, this is something what was really special to play with uh, six, seven national team captains um, in one squad, you know. And uh, there's also big characters, there's, but also there's a lot of egos. And... Uh, um, to handle that and to to join that group was also another challenge for me as a, as the German captain uh, to find my place in that group, but also to bring an effort because of course the club had expectations in me, uh, but also I immediately felt you need to yeah you need to integrate yourself in the right way, not to push too much, to to ask for too much, and uh, that was. An, an interesting group, but as I mentioned with Jose Mourinho, there was a coach who stands out, you know, of all these characters in, in his way. And he was leading the team in a, in a certain way. But there was always a special feeling, to a winning feeling uh, in the dressing room with all these characters. And that uh, was one of our biggest strengths, the mentality, beside the individual quality all the players had. Mm. I mean, obviously, when we talk about Mourinho, we talk about the special one. What, what was it that made him special? His character, his personality, his... Um, I mean, if, if he joins a room, any room or the dressing room or a camera, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, he was so confident uh, about himself, of course. 
but in a good way, you know, as a players, because players are really sensitive. It doesn't matter what quality you have, you feel that immediately that your leader, which is the coach, the manager, in English you, you say the manager, is, uh, is, the, most important, is the most important man uh, to lead that team. And he had this leadership in a special way that you want to follow him, uh, you want to, you, you trusted him. That's really important that the team trusts the coach, doesn't matter what way he, get, he goes, doesn't matter what, what language he uses, the technique of a language, uh, inside the dressing room, but also outside. You know, there is this special build up in the dressing room to, to prepare a match. And, but then you go out of the dressing room, you join the stadium and you join the public and, and the opponents and all this Expect, um, expression you, you, um, or he has an, uh, on everyone was was special, and uh, he was also beside a nice guy. I mean, you have that picture always from him to be very, very controversial, also uh, sometimes a little bit provocating in in a nice way. But in the dressing room, he was he was really a nice guy, and he was funny. Um, he was a family guy. He was uh, he was really special. Mm. What, what do you make of Chelsea these days, Michael? You know, changing managers quite a lot from Graham Potter. You know, Frank Lampard went back in. And, and, and right now, of course, uh, you know, uh, another change, Pochettino in, in charge. Are you surprised they've struggled comparatively? I mean, on one side, you want what I always thought or what I always think in football, you want consistency on the, on the manager position, you know, and Chelsea was one of the clubs, maybe sometimes who changed a bit too quick. That has, of course, something to do with the big ambitions they have, and uh, Roman had, and that, and these days. And uh, but on the other side, I think when the club looks back the last 10, 15 years, also he, how how many managers uh, actually trained Chelsea, it doesn't really help. So um, you see that today it it causes instability a little bit, not really trust in terms of players' relationship with coaches, with the board, with the club. So there's always really good players, individual players they sign, because Chelsea always have these huge ambitions. But to be successful, uh, you see that also if you look to the side with other clubs, uh, uh, they did a good job in, in the last years, you lose a, a few percentages and, and there is something which the club lost in, in, in a way this, when I describe this consistency and trust, and, and uh, that, that's really important for players. If you join a new club, you want to join in a, in a confident group, in a stabilized group. And if there's too many sign, signings, of course, you will want to build something new, but you need to, to find the right balance. And maybe Chelsea made the one or two too many moves and too many changes. That's that's why they are in this situation right now. But um, I hope there, there comes more stability and more calmness in the future to build something new and to get uh, stabilized uh, again. Yeah, I mean, there have been a huge number of signings, no question. Um, talking of signings, um, if I take you right back to 1994, Jurgen Klinsmann turns up at White Hart Lane to play for a Spurs side that were very average at the time. I think they finished 15th the season before he arrived. Here he is, a World Cup winner, played for some of the greatest teams in, in world football. Were you surprised when Jürgen decided to come to England to play for Spurs? I mean, Jürgen is a, is a, is a, is a very uh, emotional player. He was it on the pitch and off the pitch. And he's very smart in in terms of making decisions. And I'm 100% sure he knew what he was doing at this time uh, because his style of play uh, suits uh, the Premier League. And the Premier League, I think, has, uh, wanted someone like him. I remember when he scored the first goal and he, he was always a bit uh, criticized for <laughs> yeah, falling too quick. And, and he did this dive and immediately he was into the, the hearts of uh, the fans, you know, and that was Jürgen. And, and that suits really well his, his style of play again. And uh, of course, this, this, if you sign these kind of players, it makes a huge difference with the whole club. We see that with, with Jürgen Klopp and Liverpool 
You know, sometimes one guy is really charismatic, can change something, he can create something in the club. And I remember uh, Jürgen did that with, with Tottenham at this time. Yeah, I, I remember, obviously, everybody in England remembers the, uh, you know, the dive when he scored against Sheffield Wednesday and all the players diving as well, which I think Teddy Sheringham had come up with the idea and said, if you score, dive and we'll all dive with you. And, and it certainly earned him immediately, immediately a, a place in the hearts of, of the English football public. But in Germany, was he regarded as something, um, obviously he was regarded as a brilliant player, but was he regarded as something of a trailblazer as well by the fact that he, he wasn't the first to come to England, but, you know, to make such an impact? Of course, I mean, if you're such a big player for Germany, which he was, uh, winning the World Cup, um, there's always a special focus on these players, especially when they, when they uh, join another league, uh, because you present also your, your country, uh, especially the big, big players, and that's what he did. Uh, but, but he was always seen a bit, in a, or he was criticized in a certain way, because it was maybe not this tech, great technical player, but uh, he had different strength, you know, and uh, um, that's what I described when I, when I say this suits perfectly, this, this British football, this English football, and uh, maybe he saw it, that's why he did it, and uh, that was totally the right move for him, but also coming back to represent Germany abroad, you know, I felt this as well when I when I joined uh, the Premier League. You get a different view on yourself, but also for yourself. It's it's a totally new um, way of life because it's a different culture, even if it's not far. And when you see the, the, the style of football, German, English, it's not so different. But in a way, with the fans, with everything, it is different. And uh, so that's why I think it becomes become also a different view for the German fans on, on English football when Jürgen joined it. Yeah, I mean, it is interesting that so many German players have come to the Premier League and enjoyed fantastic success. Is, is that simply because there are so many similarities in terms of the game, the leagues and, and the mentality of the people? Yes, and, and you describe it, the the. the the biggest difference it was the fans, you know, of course, the quality of football, because the, I think still the Premier League is, is the non plus ultra because in terms of, of quality of players. But the fans made it also different, you know, they were so close. I remember uh, in recent years there were no fans, one of the, the earliest stadiums where, where there were no fans. And um, of course, they have their history, uh, they got banned for something in the past, but also they learned really quick. And, and uh, what, I, what I always remember is the, the immediate push you get when you're on the ball or when you have a throw in. These, are, these were things where, where the people got so excited in little moments of the game and they made it so different to other leagues, you know, that was not so common in the German league. It was a, a different support from the fans to, to the players. And when, when, when I joined England, I felt that immediately. And I also saw it before when I, when I saw the Premier League. If you, if you talk to a lot of players, they're playing in the Bundesliga or other leagues, why you want to play? I want, one time I want to play in the Premier League because you feel that as a player, that's a special atmosphere and that's, that's created by the fans. Yeah. And well, it's going to be interesting to see, isn't it, the impact of Harry Kane. Um, and we know what an impact he's had in the Bundesliga. But, but whether more English players now decide that actually they want to follow Harry Kane and play in the Bundesliga, just as German players wanted to play in the Premier League. I mean, he had his career in the, in the Premier League and um, he had his success with, with Tottenham. And now, a bit similar to me, but in the other way around, he wanted to... He wanted to feel something different and he wanted a new challenge. Mm. And I think he did, a, he did the right move in joining Bayern Munich because I know from my experience as well, it's a, it's a huge club uh, with big, big ambitions, with a great history and, and still great players in their squad. Uh, nothing against Tottenham, but I think he joined another quality. There's better players beside him which uh, uh, make him better as well. That's why he started so good. I mean, we were a lot of people were surprised for how he can adapt so quick and scoring goals immediately, so many. Uh, but I knew he will be become better with better players on his side. And that's what happened 
in a few games. Now, thanks for watching Football's Greatest on YouTube. But can I ask you please to hit that subscribe button? That way you won't miss any of our future episodes and we have some great guests coming up on the show. Uh, so, look, re reverting back to Jürgen then, Michael, obviously eventually he went on to become manager of the national team and um, he proved he was a good judge because he made you captain um, <laughs> and enjoyed some success as well. I mean, I think the 2006 World Cup you know, young squad. He wasn't afraid to make changes uh, and and reached what semi final, wasn't it? And then walked away. Yes. From from the job. Yes, that, that's also Jürgen and described a bit his character. He he was thinking. I remember he described it as a project. You know, and it, this was a word was what no, what you didn't really use in football from two thousand four. Um, yeah, after we went out in the first round in the Euro. Uh, with, with Rudy Fuller and he stepped back and Jürgen joined it and he had this project, he had this vision, uh, these two years to create in a certain way, to create a certain atmosphere, a new atmosphere in the country uh, uh, towards the, the, uh, the World Cup 2006. And it, it was a really, really special World Cup at home. He created that atmosphere with, uh, with, yeah, with results, with style of play. But you described it also after, I think it was already in his mind, maybe to, to do something else. And uh, he's a very emotional, emotional guy and you cannot really, sometimes you cannot really read him. You know, even as a player working a long time with him and as a captain, we had a special relationship. Jürgen kept always a little secret for himself. He didn't open completely to someone. That's why I think... He's not really readable in certain situations, mm -hmm. but that makes him all, uh, on the other side really interesting. And uh, there's always this this um, special working atmosphere. And uh, but he had, I I I, um, I repeat myself. He had different plans, and mm -hmm. and of course we had to accept it. Look, I mean, within the German side at the moment, then a couple of the players who have made a huge impact in the Premier League are still in that German side. Uh, and I mean, the, the the first one I think we want to talk about is one of my all-time favourite Premier League players, and that's Ilkay Gundogan, who, uh, I mean, his uh, his performances at Manchester City were... Uh, he was just so different and, and contributed in so many different ways. Yes, and I, I remember his, what, uh, it was not easy to... to on that way to become also German captain, which he is now, because he... I remember he was not so, he was not in the Bayern Munich group, he didn't uh, belong to, to a Dortmund group, so he was this player who played uh, in the Premier League and um, he didn't have the same performance for the national team, so that's for, for, for that he got criticised. And now with the title, or especially the last year at Manchester City, uh, he became a different player. He became the German. Uh, he became the captain also um, in for Man City. So Pep actually saw this talent. Of course, he knew his amb ambition to to lead a team to to be in that amazing squad. Even there, an outstanding player and an important player. That's why he became captain, I think. And also he delivered that into the German team. So Hansi Flick. It was one of his last decisions. Uh, he gave him the, the, the captaincy uh, from, of course, Manuel Neuer was injured for a long time, but there was other players, maybe Kimmich, who were, we expected to be in that position. But no, um, Ilkay was uh, somebody who deserved it. But now it's also uh, for him a big expectations uh, um, to lead that team into the Euro, which is not easy in our, our uh, situation. But you know, you, uh, you described it. He, he was um, a fantastic player, a key player on that uh, last year to win the Champions League with City. And uh, it's always a joy to, to watch him because he's so intelligent make, in terms of making decisions, in, in terms of creating space for himself, for other players. To, do, to find the right balance on the pitch. Very, 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 very good to watch him. Yeah, I mean, it, you're right, though. It is difficult for him in some senses, isn't it? Because inevitably, the German public will compare him with great German captains of great German teams before and with great German midfielders of 
great successful German teams before. Is he? Is he a hugely popular figure in Germany? No, he's. Uh, I don't want to say he's a bit. Un he was a bit under the radar, mm. but he was. He would. He was. Um, um, he, he had a calm character. You know, he was not a a speaker who was always loud in front of the microphones. No, he he, um, he was talking on the pitch. But as I said, <clears throat> if you are not in this connected to this Bayern Munich group, which was always really powerful in the past in terms of <clears throat> having the great Germans or the best German players, also Borussia Dortmund. There was one, three additional players playing uh, playing abroad, but yeah, the the base the basement and the basic came from um, came from Bayern Munich so it was not easy for him to get this uh, lobby in, in 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 Germany which which maybe he deserved but now with the captaincy it's a different story it's something where also Julian Nagelsmann supports him it shows immediately you are my key player and and hopefully he can take this as well to even become a better leader because with this captaincy I know that from my experience it makes something with you it's another step before you just think more on yourself on your own game but with this captaincy you are responsible for the whole thing for for much more and i i think it will let him grow even more mm. uh, uh, the other manchester city ex-manchester city player should i say who still makes an impact in the, in the german side is leroy sane who uh, i think has been described many times michael as an unbelievable talent it sounds crazy with what he's done in the game, but but have we yet to see the absolute best of him? Uh, temporary. Uh, in this year, yes, because he got very consistent, but you said it. He was a talent. He was always described as an unbelievable talent with unbelievable skills and ambitions to, to create something with the ball. The pace and the way he's dribbling is uh, unique. And uh, to understand that, or to understand this quality he has took him a little bit time. And it was, I remember with Pep, it was not easy, I think, for co-managers to work with him. That's why they let him go also. But joining Bayern Munich, it was also, um, at the moment, it was not immediately that he, he understood, now I move clubs, I need to change something on my game on a high, high level, because I have these unbelievable ambitions and, and, and possibilities to create something. And... and I, I have to say, it just happened really this year to, with this consistency to show that over a longer period. But I hope he can maintain that for the whole season to actually become that untouchable player, that uh, trustful player, which also your teammates see in yourself. So when I, when I, um, when I was a player and I remember, you want to be a stabilizer for your team as well. If you mentioned as one of the best players in your team, you need to show that every match and not just temporarily. And that was a way for him to develop, to, to grow as a human being, and, but also in the same time as a player. And he made a, good, a great step this, this season so far. Yeah, is that just down to maturity? I think we forget he was a very young man, you know, when he, he came to this country. I think he's PFA Young Player of the Year in 2017 to 18, ahead of Raheem Sterling. So is it just something that comes with age and experience? Of course. I mean, if you look outside, outside football, uh, everyone has a certain time frame. And, and you cannot say that, are, that you're with 10, 20, you're at your peak and your experience as a human being. No, you're just a, still a little child. You know, even with 20, 25, you're not grown. Other people in other jobs, they are just... Uh, finish their, their study or whatever yeah. you're studying, uh, uh, studying time. Uh, and then you join your work whatever you, or your business, whatever you do. In football, you're already in the middle of your peak, you know, and everyone expects uh, that you're ready or that you're ready in terms of handling everything really, really well. That means uh, understanding your ability, being, being patient, being, um, um, yeah, being at your best, but this is not, not, not possible. Uh, there's a lot of influence, especially in, this, in these days, uh, which young players have to handle beside their jobs. Of course, they get good pay, uh, paid and, and, and there's an, an, a dream job for everyone, but we have, to, we have to 
to think and we have to accept that these are young people, they make mistakes and they are yeah, just at the beginning of their life. But yeah, they have to perform because football is temporary, 15 years from 20 to 35, where other, uh, where other people in other jobs have just education or finished education. They are, we are ready at, uh, we are finished at 35 and we have, we're, we're already at the peak hour in our, in our life to, to, yeah, to have something or have the possibility to being, to being football players. But we have to accept on the other side also that they, that they are not finished in terms of a growing process as a, as a human being. Do you see in years to come, Jurgen Klopp may be being manager of the German national team? We would love it one day because he has this quality uh, he has this character to actually symbolize all Germans, German attitudes, and we need, need a leader like him. Who do you feel are the favorites for Euro 2024? And you know, every Englishman is hoping you say England. I have to mention England first. You talked about character there, Michael. I'm going to mention another player who's a very different character. And, and in English football was very divisive, I think, as well. And that's Mesut Ozil who many people loved and many people didn't love, you know, during his time at Arsenal. Where did you, I mean, he was a wonderfully talented player, obviously. But where did you stand on his years at Arsenal? What did you make of him? No, I mean, you described him as a, it's a bit similar to, to Leroy. Uh, really, really, really talented and, and, and an outstanding player. Um, and uh, has, having an impact on every every game uh, with his technical ability, yeah, he can make the difference. He can play the deciding pass. Uh, he can run in a, in a high speed with the ball, um, scoring goals. Um, yeah, and then also for Real Madrid, he he had this. He showed that um, he he can really adapt well to to circumstances, uh, but also not an easy character, not loud. But he has his own view on things, and when things are not working well in his way, um, I'm, I think he was not was not easy to handle, and that's what happened in the last years. He maybe made a few mistakes, uh, yeah, in terms of um, maybe when things are not going so well anymore. You need to change. You need to do a break. You need to see that what is coming. Uh, maybe he was not well advised, I don't know, but uh, a, a player with his amb ambition and quality uh, should maybe, in, yeah, he should be more relaxed in a way when to accept that but if something is not working anymore, you need, to, you need to go a different way. And maybe he was a bit stubborn uh, to, to stay that long or standing with your position. And um, I'm, I'm, I cannot look in his, inside. I didn't talk to him. I can just explain it a bit from outside. Mm -hmm. um, we all, all wish that players like him uh, don't be in that position, but he, it's his fault as well a little bit. So that's why um, yeah, he went that way. Yeah. Do you think he was a little misunderstood? In the sense that, that sometimes if things weren't going well, you know, you tended not to see him at all in the game. You, you didn't see the work rate that English football fans also, you know, like to, like to see. I mean, he was, <clears throat> he was not the player who really typically uh, fighted for the ball. He was a, he was a, a number 10. He was a number 10. And uh, we have to accept these number 10s with all his weaknesses. Yeah, we love, we love the advantage of these players because they make the difference. They, make, they bring the joy into the game. But on the other side, they have weaknesses. And that's uh, sometimes they feel misunderstood uh, if they get criticized. They don't, sometimes they don't, really, they don't really understand why they got criticized because they got mit misunderstood. But this world, this football world, is hard. You know, especially when you don't play well, it's immediately changed from very positive to very negative. It goes by a few days. Yeah, like I said, if you're not ready for that situation and you'd see it different and the communication is not good, you know, the communication is a big factor uh, when you talk about 
your, your current situation. Um, you don't have to tell always everything, but it's important also the communication inside the club is, is well, is good. And uh, between the coaches, between the board and the player. And if it's something doesn't really work, you have to accept it. You have to see that coming. And then maybe you have to make decisions in, a, in another way. And maybe that, that was something what uh, was not perfect uh, in that time, um, where he, how he handled that. Mm. I mean, it's such a shame for such a talented player to see the way really his career, it petered out, didn't it? You know, both at club yeah. level and international level as well. Yeah, and it was not necessary because he had a great career. Uh, but you see sometimes that the last years are even or especially the last years are very important how people see how you when you when you finish football because there's a life after for yourself but also in that environment you want to be in a football environment because he become a star uh, with football and uh, football make him big or make us big and uh, but even if you stop I see that now it you always the last year, years are really really important uh, when you when you finish football how you enter or how you got out of, of, of the business. And, and I hope he, he, uh, he handles that uh, in a certain way that he's happy in, in the future as well. Yeah, you want, to, you want to end your playing days with people loving you, don't you? That's, that's the truth of it. They, they don't have to kick you out and, and they don't have to uh, say you get old and you cannot <laughs> compete anymore, which is a, which is a small, small uh, moment, but yeah. you can miss it. A lot of players missed it. Yeah, I, I'll tell you who did um, end his, his his career being loved. Actually, I think he was he was loved right throughout his time in in England, and that was Per Mertesacker, um, who rather you know rather like Klinsman, you know, was absolutely adored by the English public. I think. Yeah, really, really great guy. I mean, simple guy. Uh, I played with him. I loved to play playing with him, but all, but even more to, to share the dressing room with him uh, because he was easy to handle. Um, he was a solid player, you know. He, knows, uh, he, know, he knew exactly what he can do, but what he can't do as well. Was he easier to handle than John Terry? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think so. But John was also, was also was a leader. John was a, was a leader. I think it was a, a different personality than, than Per. But Per grow, grew also with, with, uh, with time, especially with the move to England, uh, to Arsenal, I think, uh, that, gave him, uh, that gave him a lot, another boost personally as a, as a human being. Uh, when I saw him after, uh, or I've seen him today on TV, I mean, he adapted really well on, uh, at Arsenal, uh, become his home, you know, even after his career. That shows that he understood uh, that's not just a, a, a life yeah, on the pitch, also off the pitch after. And he made this, this move really smart. And, and, and um, yeah, I um, congrat, con congratulations for that. And he's, a, he's one of the uh, great characters in German football, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking of another um, German player, a player for Arsenal. It always struck me as a, a, a big, big character. I've never met him. And that was Jens Lehmann. Is, what, what sort of character is he? Yeah, Jens is quite controversial, you know. It's not easy to handle. Uh, I have to mention that first, uh, in, not in a negative way, but uh, in a way how he is. He, he uh, when you see him back in, at the Arsenal goal, I mean, the way he, he interpreted the, the role as a, as a goalkeeper was in these days was different. Uh, he was... Uh, he was uh, good on the ball. He was a playing goalkeeper, one of the first ones who actually, yeah, it, he had this game in the box. He developed that game in the, into the box, not just on the line. And uh, yeah, um, very, very uh, big personality. You know, when you talk to him, he has always a certain kind of view on things. Uh, which you have to understand him uh, <laughs> to handle him also <laughs> and to understand him right. Um, yeah, and he's quite experimental. You know, he wants to, even after his career now, he wants to do different things. Always when I see him, we talk about different things and he has something new. I, 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 I mentioned you 
you just did this last year and you do something new and he is a he's a changer he's always on the road you know and wants to wants to learn um uh, yeah i'm just thinking michael not as many germans playing in the premier league these days you're going to have to get out there and, and tell them you know come to the premier league that's where it is um is there any reason for that that there aren't as many german players in in the premier league right now Oh, they pay good salaries. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they see the quality of the of the Premier League, of course, um, mm. and and it's, it's a challenging league uh, with with the whole the whole package. I think suits us Germans. If you if you are able to or you have the chance to join the Premier League, um, this is also historically proven that. Young players now, they see, they, if they look back, who joined the Premier League, who did a great career. And you've seen in another picture as well, in, on, on an international basis, uh, Premier League is shown all over the world and uh, gives you also a different platform, maybe compared to the Bundesliga. Mm. And that's also something young players, uh, they want to go out, they want to learn the world, they want to challenge in, in, in a different way with different... Uh, uh, players and clubs, and that's why I think the Premier League is is the non plus ultra still. I ju just really got one final question to to finish on, Michael, and it's not about players, but about a manager. And obviously, Jurgen Klopp has come here and he's made a massive impression over the years. Not right now, but do you see in years to come, Jurgen Klopp maybe being manager of the German national team? I mean, of course, uh, in a normal career. Or yeah, he would one day he will become manager of the German national team. Everyone um, is looking for that. Is one of these coach who can? He's now in that position where he can make his own decisions. He can build his own career. He can train every club in the world. I think every club would be happy to actually have them. But he's a guy who actually loves also consistency and uh, he has values and. Uh, now is on a point, uh, on a stage in his career where he can actually, or he has this calmness to make not quick decisions, who think 10 times more to make a move, especially from such a good environment, which he built himself. And uh, But we would love it one day because he has this quality, uh, he has this character to actually symbolize all Germans, German attitudes. And we need, and we couldn't, of course, need a leader like him. In whenever he's ready, I think uh, people on the fans would love it. I do hope you're enjoying the show. I just want to tell you that you can follow us at at Football's Greatest Pod on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook, and search for Football's Greatest Pod to find us on X. Yeah. While we touch on the the national team, Michael, I, I, I can't let you go without talking about the current national situation. I mean, I, I looked at the German national side results this year and, and they've lost against Poland and Colombia and Japan and Turkey and Austria. Stop, what the, stop. What, yeah, <laughs> but what the heck is going on? It hurts. It hurts if you, if you, if you describe it. No, um, it's something really what, what yeah what's really difficult to describe and to explain even for, for us uh, as, as foreign players or experts or what, whoever is really close uh, to our national team. Uh, no, we have, we have a good quality. Individually, when you see the players, there was times we, we were more struggling in terms of quality and we had different strengths, German strength, which we call it... Uh, Attitude, discipline, all these things which we put on the on the on the field, and we were difficult to beat. It changed a bit over the years with winning 14, with winning the World Cup, with playing in a go good way, in a good style football, beating Brazil 7-1. I remember these these times, and uh, maybe expectations changed a bit, and the or orientation, and uh, also at the youth, how we want to play football in the future changed a bit in this German idea uh, but now we we lost our a little bit our biggest strength which is which is discipline which is jewels which is balanced menta mentality that's that that is so necessary when you want to win a football match and uh, that's why we have to come back to these little small details and uh, it's also a job for the for the coach 
to bring that back into that team. We changed the coach recently from Hansi Flick to Julian Nagelsmann, which is a, a very ambitious young coach. Um, but it's not easy to, to handle that young players and to implantate this old, say it, mentality into, into that German national team to win games. So that's why you, you, you mentioned it, we're losing against teams which we shouldn't lose. Uh, and you mentioned Julian Nagelsmann as the, the coach now, and I'm certain it made headlines in Germany. It certainly did in England. But but playing Kai Havertz at left back, um, shh, what do you make of decisions like that? Yeah, that's that's one of these decisions. He he ha he has his ideas, you know, and um, he said we're struggling a bit in terms of defending or having so many good defenders which you normally need to, to, uh, to balance the game. So that's why he had this idea to bring more good footballers on the, on the field. I think this is something we should not think about yet. You know, we should uh, come back to the basics, you know, to stabilize the defense. We have, like I said, if you have five, six really, really good offensive players, but th just three possessions for that, then three can't play. I mean, there's, there's a certain way to win games and you need workers and you need uh, magicians or whoever mm -hmm. you call them on, on the field, but you need to have the right balance. And putting a number 10 or a striker on the left back can work for a certain situation. In these games, it didn't work. He got criticized for that. Um, but of course, we have to do something better. We have to come back to a winning mentality and a, yeah, and a stable system which which gives you trust and confidence to win games. Yeah. And obviously with Euro 2024 being in Germany, has he got time? Has, has Nagelsmann got time to get things right before then? <laughs> That's why also we changed the, the manager because there was no time for experiments, you know, and this is six months is nothing. There's a few games. There's the winter break. Uh, where there are no games and then you have in March, you have in April too and that's it. So we don't have time. Uh, but also you said it, uh, if I go back to Jürgen Klinsmann's time at 2005, 2006, we had similar problems. We, we, we lost against Italy 4-1. Yeah. I remember that in Florence, like three months before the World Cup. We, we drew at, uh, at France, but there was a certain kind of insecurity in our German team. We can also swap that in a certain way. That's something we can do because of our mentality. But I don't really see it at the moment with this team and these players uh, because, as you said, we, we, we don't have these results over a long period uh, or we have these results now over a long period. And that makes something with these, with these players. They don't have the trust uh, to themselves in their game. You need to build trust and confidence. You need results. And that's what I mean. You need to to stabilize the team over the over good defense and hopefully hopefully he can do that over that sh short period. Yeah. I have to ask you who do you feel are the favorites for Euro 2024? And you know every Englishman is hoping you say England. <laughs> I, I I don't want to say England but <laughs> uh, uh, I'm worried I have to say it. I have to mention England first, not even in in the group. I think for me they are they're one of the, the biggest favorites, if not the, the biggest favorite um, for the tournament because they really, really stable. They look confident. They, they have the quality also in depth, not just 11, 12 players. They have a, a, a big squad, a big, a great players, young players, a good mix of experience in young players. And uh, they did well with the last tournament. And, and that creates also some some kind of trust for the next coming tournament. I know that for myself. Uh, that's something you need, that this little, yeah, how you say, concerns maybe they had in the past when they didn't uh, play for the expectations for the whole country. Yeah. But now they have it. They, they showed it at a big tournament and now I think that makes something with that group and that's why I think they're really confident to go in the next, in the next tournament. Everyone will love you for that, Michael. Everyone in England will anyway. <laughs> uh, look, Michael, thanks very much for taking the time to, to chat through some of those players from Germany who've made such a fantastic impact on the Premier League. 
yourself included. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. And we've reached the end of Football's Greatest. My thanks to Michael Ballack for joining us today. Next time on Football's Greatest, that anger and that hunger coming in after games and we beaten in the dressing room and going, we're never going to win the, the league title by, that, by playing like this. He was driven. Sometimes I, I looked and I thought, should I have a go? And say, you know, you're part of this. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode of Football's Greatest. And if you're listening to us on your favourite podcast platform, please press follow so you get us every week in your feed. Thanks for joining us. Football's Greatest is a folding pocket production with BBC Studios. <laughs>